All right, welcome to the first ever episode of this wonderfully named podcast that we totally have a name for because you clicked on it, so you know what the name is already. Uh, I'm your host, I guess. We didn't really talk about this, but uh, I'm your host, Zach, and uh, I'm joined by the ever amazing Sophia. How are you doing? Hello. I'm fine. I'm, I'm a little nervous, uh, but I'm also very excited. Um, once upon a time, we had a podcast, um, and uh, now we're trying again. It's, it's been a little while. I think it was 2017 was the last time we recorded. Yeah, it's been a minute. It definitely has. A lot, I'll, it's safe to say, a lot has changed. <laughs> um but uh, how are you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Things have been uh, going pretty well, work-wise, so. and gaming, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, so what have, you been, uh, what have you been up to? What have you been playing? Um, I've been doing pretty good. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Control. Uh, it was on sale recently, so we snagged that up, and uh, I've been having a lot of fun with it. I had played it previously um, on Game Pass. Um, and we got it because it was on sale through Steam. So I've been having a lot of fun with that. I've been trying to get to the, the DLC. That's cool. Um, and it sounds like you moved yeah. to a, uh, you're right next to a race course. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're right by the road. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty busy street. So we get yeah, a lot of... Yeah, it was of... just like a really loud car that went by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's uh, let's see, it's Thursday almost Friday so you know people are just getting excited so they can race their cars up and down the road yeah I mean what else would you do with the weekend right exactly definitely not play games no 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 you, you the, the only game the only game we play around here is how fast can I how fast and loud can I make my car go seems like a pretty fun game yeah any lawn mowers no there's not much to mow where we are. I mean, there is, um, but there isn't. So I think we'll be. I think we'll be all right. Lawn, yeah, lawnmower too. man has has retired from the podcast. <laughs> lawnmower Joer, I believe. <laughs> uh, did we ever come up with a name for him? I think that's what you were calling him. Lawnmower Joer. I don't know. It's been a very long time, so that's that's my vague memory. But. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I've been playing uh, New Pokemon Snap, which mm-hmm. is How's uh, that? pretty fun. It's it's very chill, and I, I I haven't really put too much time into it yet. It's just kind of one of those games like I'll play for 15, 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Like it's not really a bingeable game, I feel. But um, yeah, it's a lot of fun, and the visuals are insanely good for Switch. So I've been playing that. Been playing some Monster Hunter Rise with my friends. Got to get got to get through some of the. Uh, lower rank quests so we can get to the new updates and then uh, Famicom Detective Club right on I, I saw swear the... I play more than just Switch games by the way <laughs> just so happens that they're all Switch games no it's uh, only we on, only represent a Nintendo in this house um, <laughs> uh, talking uh, talk, uh, Speaking of that, I feel like that that was kind of a a, a bigger a bigger downfall of, of the old podcast was it focused entirely on on Nintendo. So I'm really excited to kind of broaden yeah. our horizons. And I broadened it by picking three <laughs> Nintendo <laughs> three games Nintendo games to bring game. to the table. <laughs> oh, I have been playing a little bit of Sunset Overdrive. So there we go. There's some Xbox. Okay. Right on. All right. So I guess we should uh, move on to the news. Uh, just okay. a quick news segment. Um, we're not going to be focusing as much on the news like we did last time with QGP, um, but we will talk about some bigger news that we want to specifically mention. So uh, we were just talking about the new Sonic game, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, the only news that I had seen uh, was the um, they're they're re-releasing colors. I guess they're they're remastering it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, th- I I think there's I don't know if there's more like I don't know if they've redone the textures or anything or if it's just like in HD now, but that game yeah. always looked really good for being a Wii game, and mm-hmm. it looks incredible now, so. Yeah, so I'm excited about that, um, and I, I, I kind of skimmed through the trailer, because I hadn't seen the, the Sonic Central. I guess the, kind of the impetus behind behind all the, the, the Sonic news is it's Sonic's 30th anniversary, is that it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this um, year's too. So there, there's kind of a lot of stuff 
um, they're they're re-releasing you know colors. Um, there's some. I didn't pay too much too much attention to it, but just sort of scanning through it, uh, they have Sonic appearing in a couple of other games like Two Point Hospital. Um, there's like a little animated short for colors. Um, yeah, they're doing another a, uh, classic like Genesis Sonic game collection. I think Sonic Origins is what they were calling it. Mm-hmm. I, I got I got like a, a little glimpse of that. I didn't really uh, pay too much attention to it because I was looking yeah. specifically for the um, the bit at the very end, uh, the the teaser trailer for the new Sonic game coming out in twenty twenty two, um, and not much to really talk about with that. Uh, Sonic uh, is running uh, as he's want to do. He can run and jump. And we have that confirmed. He, he 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 runs. He jumps. He 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 glows all spark, um, <laughs> and and it, he's gonna do it in, in next year. Yeah, there's like some kind of like digital energy thing trail that he's yeah. leaving. So I don't know what that's about, it's but some some sort of like pixelated kind of vector energy trail that he he's leaving behind. Not really sure what's going on with that, but I'm sure that we'll find out. Should come, be come to learn that it's um uh no it's not <laughs> now, I have, now I have to what? say it. It's gonna be it's gonna be a, 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 a crossover with Twilight Princess with all like the, the digital <laughs> sort of iconography that game had. Um, that doesn't really fit. <laughs> that was a bit of a stretch there. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. But you put uh, in the effort, so. Yeah, well, a for effort, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't yeah, know if you watch Sonic any of the. Is... Oh, sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. Hmm. I was just gonna say Sonic's having having a good time so far, uh, so that's good for him. Uh, but what else is going on? Um, I don't know if you watched any of the Dragon Quest 35th anniversary footage. No, but they, so they I did a whole like live stream event uh, just last night at 11:30 p.m. Okay. So I had to stay up for that one. Um, the The actual show is pretty good. Um, the way it was handled wasn't. <laughs> So Uh-oh. it was, like, it was already kind of awkward because it was live. It was, like, the creator of the franchise was some, I don't know, somebody probably famous uh, in Japan interviewing him. Uh, but they had, the translators were doing it live, or translator, I should say. And it was, like, really hard to watch. Like, she did a very good job, but she had to translate for two people having a conversation, like, talking over each other. And I was like, why didn't they just record this? Mm. Like, I don't know if you remember uh, back with the Switch reveal, that, like, No More Heroes mm-hmm. thing that was like, oh. Like, everyone was just, like, feeling so bad for the translator. Yeah, I, I remember that. That's actually the first thing I thought of when, <laughs> when, you, when you mentioned that. It was at least as bad, if not worse. Oh, no. And, no, it was probably worse, now that I'm thinking de- about it. And it w- went on for, like, a half hour, so... Some pretty cool well, stuff. What's, um, there's yeah, a, what, what's the gist of it? So there's a new mobile game coming out worldwide. Uh, some new update for Dragon Quest X, which is still not coming to the U.S. or any other region, unfortunately. There's an offline version of the game, which is kind of strange. Um, because it's not just, like, the game, but offline. It's, like, they kind of remade the thing completely with, like, chibi graphics. Just so you can experience the story without having to play an MMO. That's really weird. Why would why would they do that? I don't know. Like they have the assets and the story and the cutscenes. They just need to localize it, right? Yeah. I, I say as though I know a single thing about <laughs> what goes into localizing. Yeah, I mean I don't think we'll ever get Dragon Quest ten, but hopefully we'll get this offline version. But it was uh it was a strange announcement. I mean if it's the only way we'll be able to play ten, then I'm okay with it, but so then they announced like a new spin-off where they showed just enough gameplay to be confusing as to what kind of game this was. And then like mm-hmm. the game's director came on and was like, I really can't share anything with you. And then it moved on. So, very... well, so thanks for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was like, they really shouldn't have announced this game, but I get it. Like they were trying to celebrate the 35th. Um, mm-hmm. But this was so early in development. Um, I don't even know what it was. I couldn't tell you. It's like Dragon Quest Treasures or something. 
See, they should have done what Sonic did and 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 just uh, remade uh, Dragon Quest Colors. <laughs> um. Oh, and then they did probably the most exciting thing outside of the fact that they just dropped the announcement of uh, Dragon Quest Twelve, which is the next mainline entry. That was just a logo reveal. So cool, but not exactly much to talk about there. Um, they're doing a remake of Dragon Quest Three, the original Famicom game, and it's being mm-hmm. done in the HD 2D style of um, Octopath Traveler. Oh, interesting. So it looks pretty cool, and I feel like this fits it better. Is um, it the same team, or is it just kind of... It's the same uh, team. It's literally okay. called Dragon Quest Three HD 2D Remake. Ah, a, a title <laughs> befitting its stature. <laughs> It's just such a Square Enix thing to do. <laughs> it's it's no it's no triangle strategy, but it'll do. <laughs> yeah, so I guess that team's busy. I don't know if it's the full development team, but I know um, one of the lead designers is working on both. So, mm-hmm. or at least oh, working on this one from Octopath. I don't know if it's the same person from Project Triangle Strategy, but mm-hmm. yeah, so it's pretty cool. Uh, a lot of like kind of pre E three hype. Yeah. Oh gosh, I forgot E three's coming up. Yeah. A I guess we'll have, a, we'll have a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah. So much for not really bringing too much uh, news to this podcast. Well, we'll 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 figure it out. Maybe we can kind of rush through uh, all the big new stuff, and then right. we, can, we could pull off of those topics um, and and talk about try try to try to pull something more evergreen out of it. Right. I feel, I feel like we'll be all right. Yeah, we'll figure something out. Um, so Stay I guess, tuned. <laughs> so I guess we'll move on to our next segment, um, which is our just kind of talking point or uh, mm-hmm. gaming discussion questions. Um, hopefully at some point, if we get some kind of a following, um, if you leave a question for us in the comments, we can read that and discuss that. Sure. Um, yeah, but until absolutely. then, we'll have our own... Uh, discussion questions so this week's is how much should remakes change that also applies to remasters i guess but we'll talk mostly well i guess i guess we should um we should try to try to differentiate like what is what is a remake what is a remaster yeah what is because there's so many there's so many games that use these terms just kind of loosely right um it's hard to say what what does any of it mean. Right. So I don't know what your um, thoughts on that are. For me, I would say a remake is anything where they start from scratch again. So basically, like starting in a new engine, um, you know, completely new models, com- basically a completely new game that just follows the template of the original title. Mm-hmm. Whereas I would consider a remaster something where all they do is kind of mess with the HUD, maybe like change a few elements, like adding the Swift Sail, for example, in Wind Waker HD. Um, just basically some gameplay tweaks and graphic tweaks, new lighting, textures, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I I kind of feel the the same. Like a, a a a remake implies that you are you are starting from the ground up. Remaster. Uh, to me feels like you have something to start from and you you kind of like you polish it up you you f- fix things here and there you optimize it right but the core the core doesn't change yeah so i think we're pretty much in agreement with that so i guess then the question so the, is <laughs> so, the, so the, well, the question is how much how much should change yeah so what i mean by that is like I hear a lot of people complain whenever, like, remakes do change elements, um, whether it be, like, adding or removing gameplay sections or uh, tweaking mechanics. For example, like, Resident Evil 2 remake and Resident Evil 3 remake, like, it's completely different the the way that the game plays. Like, rather than the, um, like, fixed camera angle, third-person perspective, this is kind of more of a third-person shooter, Mm -hmm. whereas they keep the same kind of level design and structure, um, but it's a little more action-heavy. Yeah, well, I think the there's there's a delicate balance that you have to you have to strike um, with keeping the intended tone of something mm-hmm. um, because when you when you when you go in and change anything, um, you you there's like you know a, a director the director and the artists had like a specific intent with with things uh, when they were when they were created the way they were 
um, and you, you, you want to be respectful of that original vision. Right. Now, see, I'm a little bit like, more on the side of, like, while I feel like that is absolutely true, and you should keep to the original feel of the game, um, I'm actually more on the side of, like, yeah, I think it's okay to make more changes. This is a different director usually working on it. It's kind of their vision of the game. And the original game still exists. So, like, for example, I'm not the biggest fan of the Link's Awakening remake, um, just because mm -hmm. I feel like it sticks... It's literally the same game again. Like, there's no change outside of uh, Dampe's shack or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and like because of that I, I have a couple friends who you know kind of got into Zelda through Breath of the Wild and then were excited to play this one and then dropped it before the first dungeon because they're like what is this you know it, it doesn't really it doesn't feel like a modern game at all it looks nice but I feel like had they yeah. you know taken an, a reimagining almost of what Link's Awakening could have been um, it, it just it feels weird to be playing a game with such like dated gameplay mechanics <laughs> Yeah, like they they certainly made some uh, some like modern optimizations, um, like um, like making it so like when you get the rock's feather, that's kind of its own button. You don't have to assign that to one of your right, right. your special slots. Um, you, you know, you always have your sword, so you can still have two items. Right. Um, stuff stuff like that, um, but like level design wise, and and progression, everything is is pretty much the same. Um, it is kind of wild that they made like a, a full game out of out of like what was just a little Game Boy, yeah, a little Game Boy title. Um, but I don't know. I feel like you can like kind of kind of going back to what 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 I was saying, uh, and and you brought up uh, Resident Evil Two, the the remake. Uh, I feel like you like. They, I feel like they did a really good job of, of like they they changed the type of game that it was, but they did a really good job of like keeping the the vibe, I guess, mm -hmm. the 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 intent behind it. Like it, it is still a survival horror game. It is just you know they they've moved some of the things around. In, in some of the things in the world, like the 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 police station have 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 changed. Um, and it's from a different perspective, but the the court, like the 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 experience is, I I would say I would say kind of the same, you know. You, yeah. You're, you're put it put into that 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 type of situation. To to like feel a, a certain kind certain kind of way, and I feel like they they did a really good good job with that, in, in spite of changing it from how it was originally. So like I feel like there you know it is it is possible. Like I guess I guess it depends on the context. Right. Um, I feel like uh, Zero Mission is another good example of that because that's a massively expanded game, arguably the best game in the series, um, and it's you know it's a remake of a game that really hasn't held up well at all. Yeah, it it, it it's it can it can breathe it can breathe new life into something that you know maybe other people wouldn't wouldn't have have experienced any other way. Um, and I, th I feel like there, there's, there's, there's value in that. Right. Yeah, because I, I see more and more gamers like getting into series, long-running series like Zelda, for example. And it's like they're not gonna, they're not gonna want to go back mm -hmm. to some of these older games that don't play, you know, in more of a modern tone. Um, and so for me, it's like the original game is still there if you always want to go back to it. Like, that was a complaint I heard a lot with the Final Fantasy VII remake, which is kind of a whole different topic. But, um, you know, with that game, I was fine with all of the changes mm -hmm. because Final Fantasy VII still exists, and it's on, like, every modern platform. But I've, I've had friends try and play it because it's like, oh, it's a classic game, you know, and it, it's so hard to play. The pre-rendered backgrounds are confusing. Uh, the gameplay feels super dated. So I'm I'm kind of all for these remakes if they're going to keep doing those, and it seems like everyone in the industry is just kind of trying to bank off nostalgia at this point with remakes. But um, I would rather them feel like completely new games while still like giving me nostalgia in the tone and the vibes of the game rather than the gameplay. Mm -hmm. Um, I hadn't 
I hadn't considered Final Fantasy VII. That's not one that I've, I've had an opportunity to play, um, but I just looking from the, the outside in, um, I think that's an, that's an interesting one where it almost feels like they, they made the game, I'm, I'm trying to think like how to word this, they made the game that people remembered growing up with the you know they 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 did they focused on like the story and bringing these characters to life in a way that like people who grew up with the game remembered those characters feeling right um and in modernizing that also are able to bring in a, an audience of people that didn't grow up with the game um but have always wanted to experience that story Right. Yeah, that's kind of the point I'm trying to make is like I I feel like that's what more remakes should be striving for. Um maybe not so much like, you know, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl where it just <laughs> looks like the exact same game again. Uh, it looks um, awful. It, yeah. I was kind of trying to Like I don't mm. <laughs> I was kind of trying to like not directly mention it, but I was like no, I kind of have to. Like Yeah, it it doesn't look good at all. I, I hate how the game looks. Um, yeah, it just it, I I don't I don't want to get 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 off on a tangent about it, but from the last that I've seen of it, it just looks utterly soulless. Yeah, yeah, and it looks like that's another example. I feel like they were trying to stay way too close to the original, where it's like, mm -hmm. as you were saying, like I it really should be more of like a vibe thing, right? Like the characters should feel the same, the world should feel the same. It should make you feel nostalgic without making you feel like you're playing the same game again. Yeah. From like, how, how old is that game? Like, almost 15 years ago? Yeah, wow. Yeah, 2007. Oh my gosh. I feel super old right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, you agreed with me a little more than uh, I thought you might, so... <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I think that's, that, that's fair. The, you know, it, you don't want, you don't want something that, that just kind of feels, feels soulless. Like they, you know, like, oh, it's, it's the exact same, only it, it looks shiny. And it's like, it, it's like when you put, you put a fresh coat of paint on, on like, um, I'm, uh, I'm trying to think of, uh, of something that's like, like a, a an old old junker card like it's still gonna like run it's ed, the same it's it like sure it'll look pretty but it's just it's just like kind of kind of just sort of shambling around and, and it's <laughs> it's old skeleton and it's like this this is not this is this is not the the experience that i that i remember so fondly right and i feel or, like or um... it's like it's it's exactly the experience but like the it, it feels, I don't know, like... Yeah, you, like, you want the rose-tinted glasses. Like, you want to be able to look back fondly on a game and then not have to go back to the original gameplay. You know, mm -hmm. or at least I find myself in that position sometimes. The uh, Medieval remake, the PlayStation Classic. I don't know if you heard, mm -hmm. like, a few years ago they remade that game. And it was the exact same game again. And it looked really nice, but, you know, that was kind of that franchise's chance at new life. And... They stuck to those like really dated PS1 early 3D era uh, gameplay, and I feel like it's that franchise is kind of dead now. I mean, it already yeah. was, but like that was its kind of chance to get back into the mainstream. Right. So here, here's here's a question then: How? Because in in my eyes, because it's one of the one of the three. Um, one of the three big ones that I grew up with. I didn't grow up with, you know, Final Fantasy, but I grew up with Medieval, uh, Crash, and Spyro. Mm -hmm. So the the Crash and Spyro remakes uh, are really, really good. Uh, entirely. Yeah, they're basically unchanged. Here, here, right? Here's the thing: like, is is that the right terminology? I don't. I, I'm I'm getting, I'm getting all tangled up here. Um, th those are really good. So, like, what what is it? Is it is medieval just inherently not as good as those games, or was it something about the 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 intent? I think it was um, like not not translating it to yeah. to a modern era. I didn't. I'll be honest. I didn't actually play the medieval remake. Um, mm. I just remember hearing a lot of reviewers being like, "Wow, this." You know, it's still, like, kind of fun, and it has that, like, it still has that feel to it. You know, that 
kind of Tim Burton-esque feel to it. But, um, like, the gameplay is just kind of mashing a button to swing your sword. There's no, like, lock-on. There's no um, dodging. I don't know. It just doesn't really stand out in today's market. Yeah. Um, although, yeah, you bring so up I guess, an interesting point. I guess point the with, question... Sorry, go on. Oh, I was going to say, you bring up an interesting point with the uh, Crash Insane trilogy and the Reignited trilogy. So I feel like... Because those games are basically unchanged, right? Yeah, like and and there's Besides there's graphics, even like basically. going going through um, like docu- document uh, like documentary style uh, stuff like press releases and whatnot when they're talking about like how they're building the game you know they they developed tools to like specifically like pull G- pull like the original geometry from the games so that they can build off of that so that like wow. everything is at, at its core is the same but it just like looks nicer but the thing is is that like they also like make little um, little gameplay tweaks here and there, but overall, they're the same games that they were. Right. I kind of feel and like I the. Feel like, oh, sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. You're good. I feel like there there there's an aspect of like a game having this kind of like good, I, I guess good good core. Mm-hmm to begin with um that that makes it like you know you can you can go back to those original games and it's still it's still as fun um as you remember right right so like it's just it becomes a question i guess of like how well do these older games hold up um when all you do is is change the graphics and if the answer is not very well then maybe you need to go back to the drawing board figure out what is it that people did like about these games? Right. Yeah, I think part of it, I think you're right. I think a lot of it is, like, I know you don't, I don't really care so much for the Crash series, but I do love Spyro. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. I think those games did have a much better foundation. They were a lot simpler, for one. Um, but I think the other thing is price. Uh, those games are $40 for all three games in one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Most of these remakes are forty to sixty dollars for one old game. You know, it's like if you're going to go back and relive like the the glory days, your childhood. Um, you know, I I feel like price is a is a big factor too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I can I can certainly see that with with medieval. Um, like I personally like Medieval mm-hmm. um, because I I grew up with it and I still think that it's uh, it's a good game. It's a very goofy game. Yeah. Um, if I'm being honest, it's not a good game, uh, but you know it holds a very special place in my heart. Um, but I can absolutely see why, you know, it didn't um, it didn't hit the same sort of acclaim that Crash and Spyro did uh, when those were remade. Right. I think that about wraps it up. Yeah. What do you think? Any final thoughts? I think that's good. Um, I don't think I don't think I have too much more to say. I feel like we've we've pretty much hit it. Okay, so I guess we'll move on to uh, our whatever the podcast name is, Gaming Club. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is kind of be going to be like a kind of book club, but for games. So we didn't really talk too much about specifics. So we'll figure it out live as we're recording. <laughs> okay. Um, what do you think? A month? And then a quick check in each week? Um Yeah, that sound that sounds uh, pretty good to, to start. How many shows um, would the, that be? The I idea was <laughs> Yeah, the idea was that uh, we would we would pick something um that we could kind of not necessarily that um not necessarily to completion, but something that we would both be be playing at the same time, and uh, every so often we would check in and and kind of have a discussion uh, about it, talk about you know our experience with it, uh, what we think of the story, right? Um, if the you know, if there is one, uh, however however it is, and you know a, a book club, but for games. So four weeks or five. Uh, let's do four weeks. That's what I was so. leaning towards. So we're starting at a weird time. I was going to say monthly, but, um, 
we're starting on May 27th, so <laughs> I guess to the 24th of June. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll check in in a couple episodes. Right. Um, so this Perfect. week's, or this month's, or this four weeks, whatever, <laughs> uh, title was, we, we were saying uh, ukulele, right? Yes. Okay. Just wanted to make not, sure. Um, not, not the good ukulele. one. <laughs> Yeah, no, not not the impossible lair, which I've heard is very good. Yes. Um, no, the the OG ukulele. Um, that one, which, you know, you know, yeah, may or, may or may not have opinions. <laughs> I think it's. I mean, I I haven't played it since twenty seventeen. Have you? Um. Not really. Uh, I think I installed it somewhat recently uh, just to see if I could run it on my, my computer. And I can. Um, Yay! But I, you know, <laughs> I, I was very, very excited for it when, when it came out. You know, I was one of the, the first, first people to back it. Mm-hmm. So, I remember uh, I was you little... brought over your laptop <laughs> and we played the demo. Yeah. Um, I remember liking the demo. Uh, a lot more than I liked the final product, um, which um, I don't know. Maybe they've changed things. Uh, maybe, you know, it's had a few updates since uh, it released, since I played it. Yeah, it definitely um, has. Yeah, I didn't so complete I, it. Um, I think you said you hadn't completed it either, right? Originally. No, I, I, I made it. I don't even think I made it halfway in. Okay. Yeah, I made it to the casino, which is, are there six worlds or five? I can't remember. <laughs> I didn't yeah. play enough to, to get all the worlds. Yeah, I already have a lot of opinions, but I, I really want to <laughs> go back and replay this one. So yeah, I think this is going to be an interesting pick. Yeah. I think it'll be fun. You know, it's it's a genre that, that I hold very, very near and dear to my heart, having grown up with, with games like Spyro and, and Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah. Um, so I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to it. I think it'll be, be a lot of fun, and we'll have some good discussion around it. Yeah. And if you're uh, listening to this and you want to play along, feel free. Um, obviously, you don't have to go buy the game. <laughs> you can just listen to us talk about it. But um, if yeah. you do have or, it, or watch, watch someone play it on YouTube, or maybe, um, you know, maybe we can, we can have some, some gameplay. Yeah. Uh, of us playing it maybe we could do do a podcast where we we were playing it and and having a discussion while we play it who knows anything can happen on this <laughs> podcast <laughs> we don't even have all the details yet for this episode so we don't even have a name <laughs> <laughs> well they don't have to know that because it'll have a name once it's up on youtube but <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right, so I guess that's it for that segment. Uh, moving on, our last two segments, uh, sale pick of the week. So this is going to be a segment where um, we each pick a game that is currently on sale and will still be on sale by the time this episode goes up, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> um, so do you want to start with your pick? Yeah. Um, so at a time of recording, uh, Control Ultimate Edition uh, is on sale. Uh, so I've been playing that uh, recently. It's very good. Um, it is, uh, it, it's, it's like, it has like the flavor of, of SCP Containment Breach. You know, there's a lot of like weird, weird items. Um, you find, uh, documents that, that kind of, you know, with a lot of redacted details about, uh, what they do. Um, you're running around, um, fighting all these, these weird monsters. Um, it's just a very, very, very fun game, like moving around. I, I would say it's... It's like a a, a Metroidvania light, hmm. um, uh, but like as a three D platformer. Gotcha. Um, it's really good. Uh, I, I I I highly recommend it. Uh, I don't know like what else to really say about it. I'm having a good time. I'm trying to get to the DLC because I didn't get to it last time that I, I was able to play it. Um, but if you uh, if it's still on sale uh, when you're listening to this, then I heartily recommend you pick up a copy. Cool, cool. Um, um, and if you have, I, I'll, I'll put this PSA out there. Uh, <laughs> if you are having um, if you're having controller issues um, and on Steam, um, just go into controller settings and uh, through Steam and 
adjust the dead zone of the control stick uh, and it will fix that because that's something that I had trouble with. <laughs> so control has control issues? Yeah, funny. <laughs> Very ironic. Okay, so uh, pick? my pick this week is Ori and the Will of the Wisps. It's on sale, unfortunately, only on Switch. I swear I'm just not doing solely Nintendo stuff. Uh, but I did happen to see this. I checked on Steam. Uh, I checked on the Microsoft Store. It's not on sale there. But it's half off right now, uh, $14.99. Um, it's really like one of my favorite games of this generation. And in a generation filled with Metroidvanias, I feel like this is one of, if not the best one. Um, it's, it's just a really fun platformer. They fixed a lot of the uh, combat issues from the first game. So you're actually directly... Mm -hmm fighting rather than letting a little glowing orb shoot things for you. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah. They added tons of power-ups. Uh, they added side quests. The story is, if possible, even more emotional than the first game. Uh, the graphics Ooh. are even better, surprisingly. Um, and it has way more uh, chase sequences, which were one of the highlights of the first game. Yeah, it's just a fantastic game. Uh, control how does, is amazing it, too. how does it perform on on switch uh, i've heard it performs surprisingly well it's targeting 60 fps um i've i saw last time i uh, looked at some footage uh, apparently it does occasionally drop into the 50s um, but surprisingly this game runs really well it's actually pretty demanding so when i when the game launched on switch it was actually in a better state day one on switch than it was on xbox Despite oh, being wow. an Xbox <laughs> uh, property. So. Yeah, it's just a, just a really good game. Right on. Yeah, I'll, that's one I'll have, I'll have to um, check out at some point. Because I, um, I really liked the first one. Uh, I never got a chance to uh, pick up the second one. So I will I'll have to look into that. Okay. Um, and you don't really have to play the first game. Um, they're, they're both great games, and I would recommend, if you like side-scrolling Metroidvanias, that they're both worth picking up. Um, but if, you're, if you just want to start with this one, that's fine. Um, you'll, I don't think you'll really miss a whole lot. <laughs> I will say, uh, having played the first one, uh, and just from what I've seen of the second one, absolutely gorgeous game. Like, the artwork in yeah. it is, is so beautiful. Yeah, it really is. Okay, so I think we're on to our final segment now. So I don't have a fancy name for this one, but this is going to be our backlog segment. So okay. this is our weekly... I guess weekly we'll pick a game from our backlog across any platform. Any game that we you know have we own, have access to, been wanting to play, any of that... Um, and just try and get through some of those games that we probably bought and thought, <laughs> I'll play that, and then we never did. So, <laughs> And then we'll kind of do mini reviews on these, or like kind of impressions, um, and then say at the end if we would recommend it or not. Okay. So, I, uh, so what was your game? Um, I don't think I... Picked one. Yeah, you told me last time we talked that uh, it was going to be Fallout New Vegas, right? Um. Yeah, I guess I, I guess so. Um. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll. I'll. Yeah, I'll say that's because I did. I did finish it recently. Oh, did you? Okay. Um. So. Yeah. Um. I guess I can. Uh, I can talk about that. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, I really liked it. Um, it, I, I, I've had it for, for a while and I never, uh, I never really got into it. i I feel like I've always had a hard time getting into, to Fallout games. Like I really, I love, I love the, the, the setting and, and like the aesthetics of it, but it's like always been hard for me to manage like the the RPG aspect of it, like knowing how to how to build a character. Um, uh, so my girlfriend helped me out with with that because she loves the game, um, and she spent a lot of time playing it. Oh, that's um, nice. So, um, 
Yeah, uh, I, I played and beat it for the first time recently, and uh, I got to try out all the DLC, so that was that was really cool. Um, it's really... Um, I should have I thought about what I wanted to say about it. <laughs> I really liked it. Uh, it's got, got a really good tone. Um, it's, it's got kind of like this sort of... I don't know, like kind of kind of gritty noir sort of feel to it. Mm. Um, there's a lot of uh, like faction interactions. Mm. Um, you know, there there are different groups that you have to to interact with, and they all they all kind of like interact with one another in interesting ways, and you have to resolve a lot of their conflicts in order to. Um, in order to progress the story, or or not, it's it's one of those game those games where there's like you can you could do a, a lot of different things. Um, and it, you know you have to make a, a lot of uh, tough decisions that it's you you can't pl you can't please everybody. Gotcha. So there's actual like um, impact to the. Up to the um, choices. Yes. Um, very good. Uh, l lots of fun. Uh, very. Uh, I, I highly. If you haven't played it, uh, I would. I would very much recommend it, and I would recommend getting the DLC as well. Um, I think my my favorite um, was exploring uh, Big Mountain um, with all of the the robots. And whatnot, uh, very funny. Uh, also, pretty sad. Hmm. Um, very good game. Highly recommend. <laughs> I feel I feel I feel a little bad that that I like I'm, I'm unprepared to talk about it, but I, I enjoyed it very much, and uh, I'm definitely gonna play it again someday. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I heard like from what I I haven't played any of the Fallout games, so um, from what I've heard, it's probably the most different of them. Even though it's like by the developer who created the series, mm. um, but I've, because of that, like I, I know it has kind of a, it's a lot glitchier. There's a lot more issues with it, a lot less polished than uh, three and four, which is kind of crazy to say, given that those are Bethesda games. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, I've heard this one is well, like, like a lot of people. Um, I, I've heard it's like kind of a fan favorite, kind of like Majora's Mask, where it's like a lot, it's a lot weirder. A little more different, but um, has a like very different vibe that a lot of people clicked with. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, have you played the? Uh, have you played three and four? Um, I I have played three. Um, I didn't do too much of the. I don't think I actually did any of the DLC oh, okay. for that one. Um, but I have played and beaten three, and I have started playing four. Um, four is like a, a, a its own beast entirely. <laughs> um, it's it's very different um, from hmm. from three and and New Vegas. Okay. Um, so maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it, it, it's it's different and the same in a lot of ways that that it's it's hard to summarize. Gotcha. Um, but there 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 are things that I like better about four. Um, and things that I wish for uh, had kept from New Vegas. Um, so I played a, a classic RPG as well. <laughs> um, I was actually, I had another game lined up that I was going to play, and then I realized my 3DS was dead. So I didn't feel like being plugged into the wall while playing it. Mm. So I just kind of looked through the NSO catalog. I was like, there's got to be a game in here that I haven't played that I've been wanting to. Um, I've played almost every game on there, but uh, Crystalis from SNK was one of those like few NES games that I hadn't played on there. Um, so it's basically a top-down action RPG, and like you, you have different elemental swords. Um, and it, I don't know. It's just a, it's an eight-bit. It's just kind of like that general like eight-bit RPG game. So like the story is kind of vague. Um, but I don't know, like the, the combat is actually pretty fun and it's not as, it's not quite as obscure as something like the original Legend of Zelda or Final Fantasy or the old Dragon Quest games. 
So I was I was actually pleasantly surprised by it. Have you heard of Crystalis? Um, I I feel like I have, uh, but I I couldn't to, I couldn't until now tell you anything about it. Um, I, and I I think I sh I should have access to it uh, through uh, Nintendo Switch Online. Yeah. Um, but you know I uh, I very rarely go through those games. Um, <laughs> yeah, same. Pro probably the next time that I op open up the catalog will be uh, when they they add Earthbound, uh, and <laughs> which is never going to happen. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I've been hearing things behind the scenes that that's probably not happening. But uh... here, here's here's a um, here, here's a rant, uh, uh, a little off-topic rant. Okay. But they need to they need to do Earthbound in the style of Link's Awakening. Hmm. With like the um, you know the original marketing had like the, those clay figures that they did. Oh yeah. For for like magazines and whatnot, they need to do it like in that style. That'd be interesting. I think it'd be a hit. I think that game's held up well enough, too. I mean, you know they charge yeah. $60 for it, but <laughs> it's Nintendo. What I, are you going to do? I, 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 would, I would pay $60 for it. <laughs> Earthbound, Earthbound is one of those very... <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't exactly grow up with Earthbound. I played it um, uh, in my... I played it in my teens as, uh, like, on an emulator. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, you know, I wasn't, like... I didn't have a Super Nintendo, uh, but I played it uh, on my PSP years later, um, and it's 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 one of those games that that really sticks with you in a special way. Yeah, it um, definitely. I is. feel like I, I feel like if we're talking about remakes and remasters, uh, that's one that you can you can you could keep keep the old, uh, just touch up the graphics and would still hold up. Yeah. What if they remade all three of them? <laughs> that's how they brought Mother Three here. That would be so good. Probably not going to happen, but no, it's fun to think about. <laughs> or maybe maybe it is, and they're just keeping it super super secret. Yeah, and that that's why they don't want to draw any attention to it. It's like no, we're not we're not doing anything, guys. <laughs> totally not doing anything. I hope that's why um, they haven't been adding Earthbound to it, is because they are going to do something. One can only hope. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we were. Yeah, Crystalis. Crystalis. Yeah, so I think this is actually my new favorite NES RPG. I mean, that's not saying a whole lot. Um, but this, it's kind of like a mix between a more traditional, like, Dragon Quest-style RPG and Zelda. Um, so mm -hmm. you do have, like, the basic stab attack. You have charge abilities, um, and these are based on your elemental swords. So every sword has like a different elemental blast, and think of it basically as like the tr the uh, what is it? The sword beam from the original Legend of Zelda, but like mm -hmm. you have infinite access to it, but you have to charge it up each time. I'm looking looking at it real quick. Yeah, it's just uh, I like the look of it. Yeah, it's it's a nice looking game for an NES title. Um, the combat's not. I thought Discord was doing something weird. Um, I don't remember what I was saying. It looks good. <laughs> it looks good. There we go. Um, I, I think the only like real complaints I have with it are the elemental swords. There are certain enemies in the game that can only be killed with a certain element. Mm -hmm. Which would be fine if it was only the charge attack, but instead, like even if you stab them with the fire sword, if they only die with the wind sword, they do no damage. So you have to go back into your menu and then go select the other sword that you need, then back out of the menu, and then kill it. And then there'll be rooms of enemies yeah. with like, oh, these ones take water, these ones take fire, and then you have to keep switching in between every single time. And then some of the enemies that are invincible to the sword you currently have will get in the way. Yeah, it can be a little frustrating to navigate the menus. And this is definitely a game that you'll want to pull up a guide for, or at least maps. Just because some of the things, like, you'd never figure out. It's it's that kind of NES garbage that... <laughs> garbage game design that made you wander around a whole lot. But I will say, mm -hmm. I got unstuck by wandering around more often than I did with, like, Zelda or Metroid or some of these other, like, Castlevania 2, for sure. 
So props to it for that. It, it does feel a lot more modern than an NES game. It feels like kind of a tra- it feels like one of those transitional games between like the NES and Super Nintendo era. Hmm. So it's not like That's... as bare bones as like the original Final Fantasy. That sounds good. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, it's 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 not too bad. That's my review of it. <laughs> <laughs> not too bad. I didn't end up finishing it, but uh, I don't know. I might at some point. I put about three and a half hours into it, so I feel like that's that's more than I put into most NES games. So, especially RPGs. I, I feel like I feel like these these days, spending any any amount of time on 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 something like that is. Um, uh, speaks to speaks to the 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 quality um, of the experience that you have yeah have from it. This may be kind of controversial, but I feel like this is a better game than the original Zelda. Hmm. As far as like the design of it, it's not more fun to like the combat's not quite as good, but I feel like it's a lot more complex and it does a lot more things that um, more modern Zelda games have done since yeah well the, yeah i i i was i was gonna say um like just i, I was just kind of scrolling through the the wikipedia article and like the first thing that came to mind for me um was like this this feel has like a, a zelda 2 sort of feel to it mm-hmm. almost yeah um or or maybe it's more like a um like an oracle zelda feel yeah yeah not quite that modernized but <laughs> Not that good. But, yeah. Um, maybe maybe this is a direction that Zelda needs to take. Is more of an RPG approach. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't take forever to level up either, which is nice. But it does take forever to swap out weapons every single time, especially since um, you have you get like different balls of energy that then turn into bracelets later, and those will give you mm. multiple stages of charge attacks. And so if you want to have, like, the fire sword with the fire ball or fire bracelet, you have to go in and equip both of those each time you want to switch. Uh, Otherwise, it just goes like, tink, 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 and the enemies move backwards, and it does no damage. Which, again, I could see, uh, like, okay, if this enemy's resistant to fire, I get it. But, like, I'm stabbing it with a steel sword, and it's not doing anything. Like, that's ridiculous. (laughs) So there are, like, a couple little dated... Uh, design choices like that and the fact that there's no um there are no invincibility frames so if you get cornered you're just dead instantly Mm. but then again you can do that to the enemies too so wonder boy kind of had had that that aspect to it with the inventory like you would get all kinds of different armor and shields and swords and whatnot but depending on the the um, transformation that you were playing as or the 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 enemy you were fighting like certain weapons would do would have like different effects hmm. um, and some of them like were, were secret like they were different huh. um, they, like there's a, a sword you get that like I think it's called like the the animal sword or something um, and it's like it doesn't really it doesn't really like clue you in onto like being able to do anything special but like if you do if you do like a uh, an, a, a certain input, uh, it will allow you to switch transformations on the fly. Ooh, um, oh, that's nice. Yeah. So like, I don't know. I didn't really mind mind it so much in that game. So I might be okay with the the menu, okay. the menu stuff. Like 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 in Breath of the Wild, when you know you like you 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 switch into your swimming clothes so you can go across the river, and then you switch into your climbing ro- <laughs> clothes so yeah. you can climb climb up out of the river. It just happens you very know, like, frequently. I, in the I don't mind that stuff so much. Like it really gets it. It really bothered me in the hordes, like when there'd be like three or four enemies, and they're of like two different types, and some of them come after you, some of them don't, and then yeah, it's. It's still fun regardless. I wouldn't have put over three hours into it if if I didn't enjoy it. But yeah, there, there are a few Fair. things, uh, especially by getting the fourth, no, the third sword in the game. Um, that's kind of like the first point when it felt kind of like ridiculous. Like, how would I have known to do that? <laughs> Which I felt with uh, a lot of old NES games. So if nothing else, like I said, uh, there are maps online you can find. And I was able to 
mostly get through the game with just looking at maps and not having to look up guides. But kids these days have it so easy. <laughs> yeah, this game has no has no map as you might expect. Hmm. So that you have really no idea where you are. You do have a a spell though. You do get some magic um, spells in the game, and one of them allows you to transport to past towns. So that's pretty nice. You can transport yourself back to the first towns where you only pay 12 gold or whatever to, to go to the inn rather than 200. And I'm just cheap enough to do that every single time. <laughs> but you do have a spell that allows you to heal on the fly, which is pretty nice. Well, you know, give and take. Yeah. Anyways, I think that was our show for this week. Uh, we were never good at doing outros before so i'm not sure why i thought anything would change but <laughs> here we are again yeah um we're planning on doing this weekly uh, or bi-weekly i think we're trying to do it weekly for now and then seeing how that works okay so next week we will we'll do another one yeah um and until then um i'm excited to check out ukulele yeah. Um, figure out what's up with that game. <laughs> uh, there's already a couple of like spots I'm dreading already because I remember them so clearly. Mm -hmm. We'll see how. Uh, we'll see if the isometric fortress has palace or whatever ch has changed in my eyes in what four years, five years. Yeah, it will be an experience. I'm sure. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm honestly looking forward to it. Uh, you know, I'm trying to keep a positive attitude about it. I'm, you know, I'm going to be looking for things that, that I, um, look th things that I enjoy about it. Yeah. Um, instead of trying to focus so much on why, you know, why, why this is bad, why this bad game. <laughs> exactly. You know, there. You know, there. There. I feel like with a lot of games, um, there are there there are good things that you can take out of it, even if they are not great games. Well put. Um, so we we'll, we will see uh, if this is if this is a great game or just a game. <laughs> I don't know how to end this. <laughs> I think the I don't know slow <laughs> slow fade is the the closing music rolls in. <laughs> well, bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for listening. <laughs>